Hello, I'm Christine Zips, health rights advocate and founder of Saber Alternatives for Government Schools. In this presentation, which is actually second in a series, we will be hearing directly from children, from students about what goes on, what they are experiencing behind closed doors of government schools. This will be representational of what we'll find across the board, certainly in the US, many places throughout the world that parents are not usually aware of. And we believe that it's good to have the information so you can make up your own mind. And part one, we heard from the parents' perspective on what goes on in government schools and what they felt about it. And the one that will follow this will be focused on experts in this um, on this topic. So we hope you'll enjoy this series. We hope you'll find it helpful. And you'll see additional information below in the show notes. So thank you so much. We hope you enjoy this information. I want to show you guys this video because, again, this is, it is not new. It has become ubiquitous. And in this, um, in this video created by the NEA in partnership with the Human Rights Campaign, a vicious, vicious, radical left-wing hate group that is uh, trying to have the federal government force churches and, and mosques and synagogues to, uh, to bow to this. Um, you see these two little kids, uh, a, a kid who calls itself Emma and another kid who calls itself Z. And uh, I want to show you guys this clip because uh, this is what they were showing teachers. Again, the NEA represents or purports to represent uh, over 3 million teachers in this country. And this is what they put out to their teachers. Check this out. Hi, your name is Emma? Yeah. Correct. And my name is Zim. What pronouns do you use? I use she, they, them. Cool, cool, cool. What pronouns do you use? I use they, them, and also just Z. And so instead of being a boy or a girl or something undefined or in the middle, I kind of like, just use my name. You know, my name is Zim. So if you just use Z instead of a pronoun, it's like more personalized and like less fitting into a binary. Okay, so yeah, my pronouns are Z and tree and free and uh, really? Really, folks. Uh, and now watch how ubiquitous this is, okay? Uh, at least according to the, the children. Listen to this. What makes a teacher nice? For me, it's when they ask me my pronoun and when they uh, support me and when they um, call me as equal as everyone else. You said it's cool when teachers ask pronouns. That, I, that was never a thing when I was like in elementary school or even middle school. Did you find that you had to like ask for that or like even educate your teachers? Well, when I had a substitute sometimes I had to educate like one time when the substitute called me a boy, mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I even had some friends stick up for me. They were like, she's a girl. And it was kind of weird, you know, when, like, when we have to educate the folks who are supposed to educate us, that's kind of a struggle and kind of a hassle. During the last quarter of her junior year, she took a psychology class for the first time and learned about child development. One of the lessons covered the Harlow experiments on infant rhesus monkeys with a theme of maternity mother-child bonding, and breastfeeding. I started to realize this is what I'm taking away from myself. I'm not going to be able to bond with my children the same way that a mother does by taking on a male role, and I've gotten rid of my breasts, so I can't feed my children naturally or be involved with them in that way. And I think that was like the biggest catalyst in me realizing how wrong all of this was, she said. Embracing Womanhood Cole announced her detransition in May 2021, about 11 months after the surgery, and has embraced womanhood. I am a woman, she said. Despite her transition, Cole said she has always been mainly attracted to masculine men and had only ever been marginally attracted to women. She is now straight, she said, and knows now that her gender confusion as a child was based on insecurity and her fear of being a woman. Cole has enjoyed cultivating a new feminine look for herself, but says she still isn't really into makeup and doesn't have time for it most days. I'm almost always in a dress or a skirt because, honestly, it's really comfy, she said. She's learned to accept her body the way it is, she said, and doesn't want to go through the process of reconstructive surgery or get breast implants. There are multiple options for reconstruction, but I honestly don't think it's worth it, she said. 
I will never get the function back no matter what I do, so there's not really a point in doing it. Cole graduated from high school in May, and she has applied for college. Message of Hope Though she has been harassed on social media and threatened by activists, Cole said she's committed to sharing her story. I want to prevent more cases like mine from happening, she said. She wonders why educators have become complicit in the gender-affirming process. The problem is they're not really pushing back on this whole trans thing. When I told the high school to change my name and my email and their records, there was really no pushback or anything, she said. Cole urged children who may be thinking about gender transition surgery not to get caught up in the whole romanticization of what it might be like to be the opposite gender and suggested they consider that there may be other reasons underlying gender dysphoria, including autism or other mental health issues. I very much suggest waiting because the brain doesn't stop developing for most people until about their mid-twenties, if not a bit later, and teenagers are known for making rash decisions. It sucks hearing that, especially as a kid, but it's the truth, she said. There is a reason why you can't buy cigarettes or alcohol or vote or rent a car under a certain age. There was, yeah, the label on it. It was like, this is a safe sp um, space for all LGBTQIA, all that stuff. And I was just kind of thinking, well, what about the straight kids? And so I walked in and there's this ginormous pride flag hanging on the wall. Like there's, there was a small American flag, but it was like in the corner of the room. It was, the pride flag was much bigger. And I looked to my left and there's this boy in a dress. And that was just, that was a culture shock because I've always been a private Christian school. So to see this dude in a dress, I was just like, okay, this is interesting. Well, see, what's kind of off-putting is that these teachers, most of the time they seem very nice. Like this teacher, he was very nice to everybody. But also the first day of class, he gave us this survey. It was an online survey and it asked, what are your pronouns? What gender do you identify with? Is it male, female, other, well, neither, that kind of thing. And you, you had to fill out like what your pronouns were. And then below that, it said, what pronouns should the teacher use when refer, um, referring to you, to your parents, in case you don't want them to know your pronouns? What did you think about that? I was just like, oh my gosh. I mean, like people had told me like, yeah, you're probably going to see this kind of stuff happening. And I was like, I really doubt like I would actually see it though. I, I hear stories about it, but then I actually see it and I'm like, I can't believe this is actually happening right now. I was wow. just, I was shocked. I took a photo of it and stuff. And I was just like, I can't believe that this is on the survey. Furries, this didn't happen to me, but Furries are legally allowed to, in a classroom, if a teacher asks them a question, they can bark or meow back, and the teacher can't say anything about it. They just have to be like, oh, good job, you got that question right. This is stunning. <laughs> it's so out of touch with reality. One of the boys that we would see, thought he thought he was a girl, and he wore these certain shoes that, like, he always wore the same shoes. And my friend saw him, um, his shoes in the bathroom, and he was in the girls' bathroom facing the other direction. So it was just kind of like, okay, yeah, that's, that's not a female. Yeah. That's, that's very troubling. That's allowed, very, yeah. Yeah, very disturbing. So as I understand it, Olivia, you, you're no longer at that public high school. No, How, no, I lasted yeah. two weeks. Okay, you lasted yeah. two weeks, and were you telling your folks about this every day? Were you coming home and saying, oh my oh, gosh, yeah. I can't believe what I saw? Yeah, and my mom, who grew up Catholic, she would just go and grab her rosary and just <laughs> sit at the table. like just She was just shaking her head like, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe I let you go. Wow. Well, what yeah. was it that, how did you decide that you wanted to, um, you know, get out of the public school and then do your homeschooling? What was it that... It's just much more self-managed because in the class, I wasn't learning anything. Everything I had already learned like years ago. Like, seriously, I'm not joking. One of the questions the teacher in my math class asked us was what was 12 plus three? And the rest of it was like four times six. And this is in high school yeah. math? Yes, this is in freshman ninth grade math. So not only were you in a, an environment that was uncomfortable and awkward yeah. and not aligned with reality, 
<laughs> but allowing and even encouraging all of that. But then the academics were falling short. The academics were awful. I mean, we in the math class, we would learn for like five minutes. I mean, like, I'm not, I mean, like, I do like to have my free time and stuff, but also it's like, this is school. We would have five minutes of instruction. And then the rest of it was the teacher was like, okay, you guys can just do whatever you want. So everybody's on TikTok. The teacher's just sitting at his desk, kind of just playing on his phone and stuff. Do you think you will try the new high school when you are living in your new state? Or do you I have to be honest. No, no, I don't. I don't want to try it, honestly, even though it's in a much different state from California. I really, really have enjoyed homeschool and I have friends out there already who are doing homeschool and I've just, I've completely enjoyed it. There's just so much more opportunity, I guess. I mean, you don't get as much interaction, but you can get involved with a homeschool group. I homes, I had a homeschool group the past few years and they were awesome. We would go on field trips together and like sometimes do our work together. We dissected a frog together too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah it, it just there's so much more opportunity too. I mean, you're even if you're all learning different things, you don't have to be the same age. You can still like hang out on your breaks. You can still go do things together. And then when it's time to work, then you guys all just go and work. And then when you have your free times, you all go hang out together. 